Let me see something like that. Before I put the lens, yeah. Drake, what the hell's going on? We're under fire from remote control laser launchers are trying to lay the mag shield. Hang on, Stuffy. And cut it. Where cut? Uh, mm -hmm. Hang on, Stuffy. Adam? <laughs> yeah.
I knew that was <laughs> the stump man. Okay, um, tell us a little bit about the character you play. Who is Drake? What's, what's this guy like? Oh, I guess he's just a, uh, he's a renegade, a rebel. But he's cocky, he's good at what he does, and he, uh, he does it with a lot of uh, confidence and arrogance and hopefully style. Um, no, I don't think so. So what other kinds of films have you usually been in? Is this kind of film different than any other films you've been in? Yeah, it's the first hardware film I've ever been in. Uh, you know, it's a, the star of the movie is really the robots and all the action and the, and the, you know, the fun that goes on with all that and, uh, so I think that's really what makes this film special. And I've never done that before. They're building the set for the Puppet Master 4 over here. All right. Okay, so, um, but besides, you were mentioning to me that you also write. What scripts have you written? <laughs> what scripts have I written? Uh, well, the most pop famous one is Harley Davidson, The Marvel Man. That's my first original script I wrote that was produced. And uh, other than that, I rewrote scripts that were never made. Uh, I rewrote Spider-Man for Canon Films. Uh, and a couple others, but they never got made. Did you, um, did you want to be a writer or did you want to be an actor? You just happened to write well, too. I started writing in nine years ago, 10, 11 years ago. Man, 11 years ago. I was 18 years old. And um, I just always did both. It made me, helped me fill the time when I was at, wasn't acting. 
and it just turned into a second career. And uh, so now I do both. Actually, primarily I write until I haven't acted in about three years until just recently. So what's it like to have to act in front of a blue screen like that and try and see something that's not there? It's very difficult. It's almost impossible. No. It's all right. You just use your imagination and have fun and yell and scream and hop around and act like you know what you're doing. And hopefully people believe you. Uh, I've never acted with a blue screen. I've acted with primarily actors in the past. <laughs> First time I've acted with a blue screen. No, I, uh, in Harley Davidson, the Marvel Man, we had some blue screen stuff. But, uh, it's fun. That's the first time. So, um, what do you think about the script? How, how plausible do you think this might be in the future? Something like this. Uh, I think it's totally implausible. But that doesn't matter. It's, it's just a Saturday afternoon matinee movie, you know? It's Flash Gordon. It's all those other great movies that kids love, you know? It's fantasy. It's adventure. It's it's why people go to the movies, so we don't, you know, no one wants to go see a, movies about things that happen to us in our real lives, so we go to see movies that happen to us in, uh, that would never happen to us. And this is one of those things that's, you know, so far out there that you'll go with it because it's a movie and you can, and you can imagine it because of robot technology is so advanced. Um, but I hope it doesn't happen. I hope we don't have big giant robots traipsing across the desert fighting each other for, you know, for uh, boundaries of the land, the east versus the west. I, I don't think it'll happen. I hope it doesn't. Now, what about your sidekick, um, Stumpy? The stuntman, Jimmy. What about him? Well, what, um, have you never met him before? I just met him today. Or actually, I tell you, last Saturday I met him. Uh... <laughs> he's, oh, he's the kind of guy that I think could get along with anybody. He could probably get along with Charles Manson if he had to. He's just a sweet guy, you know, and he's been a lot of fun. And this, May I interrupt? I just really want to get on video, so what can I tell you? What can I tell you? You're released. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. I'm done. And you're done. You can continue your interview, and we'll sign you out as soon as you're done. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks. All right. We'll get your call time for you. Wayne will sign you out. All okay. right. John, your glasses are in the production office, so uh, peace office. All right. Okay, so I'm going to be out here. So just okay. All right. Are you done for the day? So we can continue. I love acting. It's like a job, you know, it's a, there's a famous saying, that I forget who said it, it's a tough way to make an easy living. It's a lot of fun. You get to uh, meet a lot of different people. Uh, you get to be a kid and play. Um, and hopefully, if you're lucky, one time in your career you get to do something that you feel is creatively satisfying. Or you get to perform a part, or you, you bring some kind of a... I can't even hear what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I was just saying hopefully one time you get to, you know, do something that you feel really... These guys are installing a Blaupunk stereo over there into the... Until I finish this stuff, okay. I'll can I send you out? Or? Sure, send me out. Right there, right there, there. I'll put I'll put this in your room. All right, that? that's fine. All right, back. Um, oh, <laughs> if I liked acting.
Yeah, south of here. I did. That's why. It's the only reason why. It wasn't my acting that got me the part. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of them. I see them all the time. I haven't found it difficult so far. I, you know, sometimes you wonder what they're saying about you because you don't understand, you know, what are they saying? Oh, look at him, he's looking, da, da, da. but it hasn't been a problem, you know, they, and they speak English. It makes me feel a little bit, uh, I guess I wish I spoke another language, you know. In Europe, they all speak several languages, and here we only speak one, or at least most of us. But it hasn't been a problem. I actually kind of like it. Need to hear different languages. What else? That's it? Oh man, that was easy. I'm out of here. Time hold it for him, Ron. Thank you. 
come nobody's ready. I mean, I, they've had all morning to get ready. Here she is. Sorry. There's Pam. There's that. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, there. Okay. Now, if I can have, if I can have complete quiet, huh? If I can have quiet. If I can have complete quiet, I'm going to try and rehearse this carefully. Without the, uh, they can just stand there, uh, sit there and relax. Start uh, wait till you get a response. Okay, it's locked in. Starters, I don't know what the set. It doesn't really matter right now. You know, yeah, it is. So get it quiet on the yeah. set. Everybody in the elevator, please. Stand by quickly. We'll print this and go to lunch. Come on, guys. In the elevator. Come on, guys. Everybody on their marks. Close the door. One moment. Are we in position, please? Close the doors. Kill the fans. Hold all the movement on the stage. Stand by. Hold Sound speed. A marker. Action! Believe me, there are some happy people over there right now. I still can't figure it out. Was it real or was it simulated? I don't know. Let's just get out of here. Leah! Danny! Hi! Hi, honey. Hi. Oh. I didn't expect you until morning. Well, I kind of know I owe the tour group. I mean, the satellite was urgent. You know me, I'm a journalist. Shh. Keep quiet, right? I don't know what I'm doing with you. Hey, you're right. <gasps> you really bugging me. Oh, oh some cowboy pretending to be a robot pilot. I had to pick this afternoon to prove what an asshole he is. Excuse me, miss. Did you call me an asshole? You broke my specimen, you jerk off. Oh, now I'm a jerk off. My grandmother could pilot that robot better than you. Were you suicidal or just incompetent? Are you busy tonight? Excuse me? Let's go to your place. Mine's a mess. You do have brain damage, don't you? And you have got some set of lips, ladies. And Sorry. you have got a lot of nerve jeopardizing people's lives for your own amusement. She wants me. Like a festering boy. You see, Stumpy, this woman cannot live without me. 
I think you need a little respect. <laughs> and you, my friend, need a nice pack. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, Rocky, it wasn't my fault. Wow. I like her. She's got some pair of sweater puppies under those coveralls. Bite your tongue. That Hellcat is going to bear my children. I'm thinking you're a little punchy, sir. She doesn't even like you. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe you're right. That was no love tap, my friend. Well, she's got a point. We got no right dragon. Tourists through a firefight? What am I supposed to do, Stumpy? Ignore a direct order? Those bastards at Opcom want me to pretend like it's all for show. She's no dope, that lady. Maybe she'll blow the whistle to the press. I hope she does. I've had it. Now, Kevin, don't start saying you're going to quit. You're not going to quit. Yes, I am. I'm going to quit. This time, I'm going to quit. Put a fork in me. I'm done. Again? Yes. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Kevin. Cut! Why, why couldn't we have ended the way we did such a wonderful thing? Again?